and he literally said to me that if I didn't do something about it I would end up trapped in my flat forever and it would have won. Hat or no hat? Hat? No, no hat. Hello and welcome to this third, I think, um, this video about anxiety and me and the journey I have had with it. And I, to be honest with you, and I'm always frank and honest in these um, discussions with you, is that I have been putting this off for some time. It always seemed like a good idea, but every time I go back and I wrote a script and started to almost like re-engage with something that I had sort of like trapped away and tried to avoid going back to what was a very um, tenuous and very tense moment in my life. Um, I just chickened out. But anyway, I've decided that tonight is going to be the time to do it. I thought I'm not going to stream tonight. I'm going to win over this. So I've actually got my stream elements um, t-shirt on, hoodie, yeah. It comes with a hood, look. Hood. I know, I'll leave it off. Oh, now it's all uncomfortable. I know I'm procrastinating again. So let me tell you about my visits to a clinical psychologist. I can't remember where we were up to and I don't like going back re-watching these videos, but they tried a huge amount of medical um, tests and procedures on me, um, tubes down my throat, tubes up my nose, tablets, antidepressants, the whole works. And, and nothing was really working. And I remember going to a doctor and saying, look, there's only one thing left we're going to refer you to a clinical psychologist. Now, I think psychologists have a really, a really huge stigma attached to them. You know, once somebody says psychologist, you sort of like think, that's it. You know, I'm going to end up with a straight jacket somewhere, bouncing around a padded cell. And I was quite nervous about going and quite nervous about interacting because I was very worried that he was going to or she was going to expose all my innermost secrets that I've been trapped to keeping trapped away for years after years. Anyway, to be honest with you and I'm trying to keep focus and I'm keeping on track. Um, to be honest with you, even though I was 30 plus, I had to take my mom with me. Yes, the first time I went, I had to take mom, really because, and she was wonderful throughout, because if she hadn't come with me, I would never have got there. So I had to meet up with her, we went and we sat down, and then I went in by myself to see the clinical psychologist. Now, I have to sort of like say here, now, this minute, what I, how I perceive my anxiety, okay? And I also have to say to you right now that, I am not cured from this. I still have it, it still exists, and I'll talk about that in future videos. But one of the important things that I, how I um, see my anxiety is that it's a constant battle. There's a raging conflict happening in my body over and over and over again between my body and myself. And my body and my mind and my brain is constantly in conflict with almost like my rational self. And when panic attacks hit, that is when my rational brain is no longer in control and anything can happen. Well, I normally just collapse, yeah. So anyway, so with that in mind, I headed off to the clinical psychologist and I did express this to him at a later date. I was bad. I was extremely grumpy. I wouldn't answer any of his questions in any great amount of depth. I was. I just thought everybody was at me unfairly and that people didn't understand me and what did they know and who was this person who was going to um, cure me and why did he think I had some kind of mental illness. And every time every time he gave me things to do gave me targets to do and i literally just rebelled i literally said no 
and he would say, well, go off and try it. And I would come back the next week and he would say, how did it go? I said, didn't do it. It wasn't, it was pointless. It was, he actually gave me a whole load of um, information one week and I took it away and I brought it back. He said, did you read it? I said, yes, not only did I read it, I also highlighted and made comments and handed it back to him. And he just sort of like looked at it and he says, I think you've missed the point. Anyway, it got to the point and he was really cross with me. And he literally said to me, and I have to be careful. I actually filmed this clip a little bit before. So it's not the same clip because it gets me emotional thinking about it. But he literally turned around to me one day and he said, look, if you don't want to do something about this, then that's fine. Don't come back and just stay trapped in your flat forever and it will have won. And I went to talk to him and he said, no. He said, this meeting is over. And he just sort of like picked his stuff up and opened the door and I just sort of like sauntered out, very sort of like despondent. And I had to do a lot of thinking between that week and the following week. And I think that is when I came across this idea of this internal conflict and battle that is always going on inside me. And I don't know whether or not he knew me, but I am incredibly stubborn. And as soon as somebody tells me that I can't do something, then it's almost as if I rebel against that and actually go out and do it. So it came the next week and I went and I apologised. I ate humble pie and said, OK, then let's do something. And he reassured me and sort of like said, right, look, we'll do this journey together and we'll get through it. And I thought, right, OK, then. So the, he, every week he gave me um, targets, tasks to do and the first task was, and I remember it to this day, was to walk from my flat to the meeting in the in the hospital. Uh, now, at that time, I found it incredibly difficult to go outside. Um, if I did, I would go by car because that seemed safer. I couldn't sit in coffee shops. I couldn't go out for a meal. I even found Sainsbury's or shopping a real trial. And remember, there was no sort of like home deliveries at this point. Um, so I sort of thought, right, this is it. I had sleepless nights for weeks before. And the day that I had to go and visit him, I couldn't eat. I felt sick. I kept coming out in cold sweats because I knew I was going to force myself to do it. And I, I'm not kidding you. I had to set off hours beforehand because I kept leaving the flat, walking a few steps and then going back and then going out again and getting to the end of the street, turning around and coming back. And this went on and on and on. And there were totally irrational thoughts that my brain was trying to say were rational. Um, did you turn this off? Have you got this? Do, do you need your coat? Do you really believe what you're doing here? You're out here, not outdoors, but being able to threat, be threatened or attacked or anything like that. Anyway, I sort of like battled my way through that, sweating profusely and went in and out. And then after a while, I literally put my headphones on or my earbuds from my iPod and walked. And I just walked and walked, walked, and I just sang along. One of my ways I cope with um, panic attacks is to try to sing a song in my head. Anyway, I just walked, walked, walked. Now, at this point, I am on high alert. You know, anything that moves, I, I'm like one of those cats that watches those leaves. And I'm thinking, oh, no, oh, no, no. no. I'm thinking, talk about, talk about, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You're nearly there, you're nearly there, you're nearly there, you're nearly there. Anyway, I'm walking down this street and this is the honest truth. And no, nobody's on the side of my road and I see somebody, a guy, walking up on the opposite side of the road. And I'm thinking, don't make eye contact, look down, look down, look down. He, he walked, and as I'm walking along, I see him 
come to the curb, look left and right, and then walk across on an intercept course. Oh my giddy aunt. I, I'm this, I honestly, and you'll find this hard to believe, I thought I was going to die. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, and I just thought this person's just going to mug me, going to hit me, going to, I'm not going to be alive. And I think, oh no, no, no. And, and I thought, he'll just walk past, he'll just walk past, he'll just walk past. And no, as I'm walking towards him, he's standing in my line. Oh, I'm just thinking, go home, go home. My brain's going, go home, go home, go home. I'm thinking, no, no. But another part of my brain is saying, run, run, run. Another point says, it's a curl into a ball, curl into a ball. And I'm thinking, it's good. And I thought, I'll just walk past him. I'll just walk past him. And I'm walking, I'm walking, and keeping my eyes down, I'm like this. And I get really close to him and he turns around to me and he sort of like puts his hand out to almost like what I'm thinking to attack me. Going, and he says, you got a light. I said, no, 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 I'm sorry. I have no light. No light. I'm sorry. I have no light. And just head down and plowed um, to my meeting. Absolutely unbelievable. Got there had 30 minutes to calm down. At one point, this clinical psychologist thought I was actually going to pass out because I had no colour in my face at all. Had to bring me a, a little glass of water. Oh, it was unbelievable. And I sort of like calmed down. And he said, he said, well done. He said, you've made your first step forward. And that was quite a remarkable thing for me. And I suddenly thought, wow, I might actually be on the road to recovery here. And that might be a wonderful um, start. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there now. Um, I'm getting a bit emotional. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm going to leave it there now. And I'll come back in a, you know, in a couple of weeks and I'll tell you about the other targets that he gave me because he certainly gave me plenty of targets. So, if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then please consider um, liking, liking, commenting and subscribing and or pressing that bell button. Every one of them, uh, every sub and every notification really does help towards supporting my channel and my dream. And please, down in the comments below, let me know how, what was your first time that you actually managed to battle anxiety? and actually win. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that and do come back next time and join me on my journey through anxiety and me. Hope you are all super calm and no matter what, do not give up. See you all later guys. Bye. I might have to wipe my eyes.